In the west of Ireland lies a land marked by both the scars of its history and the indomitable spirit of its people. There were lots of prohibitions on Catholics. In the early part of the 18th century, it was very severe. They, they couldn't have mass said in a public place. They couldn't own land. They, they couldn't really administer the country in any way. The tax was levied on the amount of daylight that came into the house. Putting in a half a door, there could only then be assessed on a half a door of daylight. Hence, you had the expression, he's a daylight robber. So the mound here is a burial ground for 564 unnamed, unrecorded, unknown people. Our people. Under the shadow of hardship and famine, it is a land that has seen generations scattered by emigration. It's estimated that over two million people immigrated from Ireland between 1845 and 1855. We invite you to join us on a journey as we unveil the history, culture, and resilience of a small town in the heart of the west of Ireland. These tales speak of resilience, kinship, and the timeless connection between humans and nature. There seems to have been music regularly in, in every townland in Ireland because music was, was the thing. Well, music is very important to me because it was a very big part of my family. My parents emigrated to the 1950s and both of them came from Swinford. There's a, there's a draw from all over the world of Mayo people. Mayo people love their heritage, they love coming back to their roots. They love to come back and, and hear the music and meet their friends and just, you know, connect with their roots. It's important to come home for me, full stop. But I think for the Shimsha, there's still so many of us that still gather. You know, it's like we've never, ever been apart. Together, let us discover the magic that ignites the souls of those who seek their ancestral heritage. For it is here, within this captivating landscape, that the ancestors' whisper becomes a resounding call to come home.